Saint of the Day, September, 11, 1, Saint Jean Gabriel Perboyer. Saint Jean Gabriel was born in Puech, France, on January 6, 1802, to a pious family of eight children. Including Jean Gabriel, five of the Perboyer children became consecrated religious, three priests and two nuns. Accompanying his younger brother Louis while he was entering the seminary, Jean Gabriel discovered his calling and entered the congregation of the mission, founded by Saint Vincent de Paul, at the age of 16. He was ordained at age 23 and taught theology at the seminary before being appointed rector, and later master of novices in Paris, on account of the sanctity his superiors saw in him. His younger brother, Louis, died on his way to preach in China at the age of 24 and Jean Gabriel asked to carry out the mission that had been entrusted to his brother. He arrived on the island of Macau on August 29, 1835 and set out for the mainland later that year. He carried out his evangelical labors in Honan for three years before being transferred to Hupei. His missions bore much fruit in the short time he spent there. On September 11, 1839 Jean Gabriel became one of the first victims of the persecutions against Christians, dying in a manner which had a striking resemblance to the Passion of Our Lord. He was betrayed for a sum of silver, stripped of his garments and dragged from tribunal to tribunal, beaten and tortured continuously until he was sentenced to death with seven criminals. He was crucified and died on a cross. Canonized on June 2, 1996 by Pope John Paul II, Saint Jean Gabriel Perboyer is the first saint of China. Before his death Saint Jean Gabriel wrote this prayer. O oh my divine Savior, transform me into yourself, grant that I may live but in you, by you, and for you. So that I may truly say, with Saint Paul, I live, now not I, but Christ lives in me. 2. Saint Paphanudius, September 11, the Catholic Church honors Saint Paphanudius, an Egyptian monk who became a bishop, endured torture for the faith, and participated at the Ecumenical Council of Nicaea in its confirmation of Christ's divinity. While there is no record of Paphanudius' early life, it is known that he, like many other men of his day, became a disciple of the monk Saint Anthony of the Desert, whose direction of a community of fellow hermits marked the beginning of traditional Christian monasticism. Having spent several years pursuing spiritual illumination in the austerity of the desert under Anthony's direction, Paphanudius was eventually chosen to become a bishop for the Upper Thebaid region. This placed him in direct conflict with Maximinus Dea, the Roman imperial ruler of Egypt and Syria from 305 to 313, who persecuted the church in these regions and attempted to undermine it by strengthening the institutions of paganism. Under Maximinus Dea's rule, Paphanudius had his left leg partly mutilated and his right eye put out, in an unsuccessful effort to make him renounce the Catholic faith. Not yielding before torture, he was condemned to manual labor in the mines. Imperial policy toward Christians shifted between 311 and 313, in the midst of a power struggle between the various co-emperors of the time. The Emperor Constantine began to embrace the faith in 312, and he proclaimed its legality the following year, during which Maximinus Dea also died. Since he survived the ordeal of persecution, Paphanudius was regarded with reverence by the first Christian leader of the Roman Empire. Constantine is said to have met frequently with the bishop from the Upper Thebaid, showing his respect by kissing the wound left by the loss of his eye. The Egyptian bishop is also reputed to have played a role at the First Ecumenical Council, which condemned Arianism and promulgated the Nicene Creed. While celibate himself, Paphanudius successfully resisted an effort by some council participants to change the Eastern Church's traditions regarding married members of the clergy. During the years of doctrinal confusion that followed the Council of Nicaea, Paphanudius stood in defense of Christian orthodoxy alongside Saint Athanasius of Alexandria, and other church leaders who upheld the doctrine of Jesus' eternal preexistence as God. In 335 Paphanudius joined a large group of Egyptian bishops in attending the regional Council of Tyre, where they found the majority of bishops adhering to the Arian heresy. 
Paphanudius was especially distressed to see his fellow bishop Maximus of Jerusalem mingling with the Arian clergy, since Maximus, like himself, had once suffered torture rather than compromise his faith. The Egyptian bishop took his fellow confessor aside, and personally persuaded him to back Saint Athanasius in the struggle against Arianism. The year of Saint Paphanudius' death, like that of his birth, is unknown. He should not be confused with another prominent Egyptian monk of the same name who appears in the conferences of St. John Cassian nor is he the same Paphanudius whose martyrdom the Eastern Churches commemorate on April 19. St. Jean Gabriel Perboyer and St. Paphanudius, pray for us. K. Carla Channel